So it was a personal attack, somebody who knows her. The, the measures he was going to for this girl is sickening. What's up, Team Jazzy? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I am back with another mix. So today's true crime is going to be about Emma Walker and the man in black. Emma Walker was a beautiful, vibrant young girl. And um, she, even though she was a teenager, she was torn in between being a veterinarian or a, um, a nurse in the NICU for babies. And she tragically lost her life due to the man in black. So we're gonna get right into that. Give this video a big thumbs up on the simple fact that I felt like being bad today. And I got some raisin canes. I got some chicken strips, some toast, fries, and then the raisin cane sauce. And I got some sweet tea. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of cardio the next couple days. All right, I'm gonna pray so I can get into this story. I'm really hungry, so I think I'm gonna eat first. So, so true crime starts right here. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the food that I'm about to receive. I ask that it may be nourished to my body. I ask that you bless the hands I prepare to invest my entire team. Jazzy, amen. Ooh, I'm hungry. Y'all, I'm so hungry. Mm. I have not had raisin canes in so long. Because y'all know I've been on my vegan kick. But as you can tell, I'm not all the way vegan. I have my days. But I can't say that. 90% of my meals are vegan. <laughs> mm. So how are you guys doing today? So Emma Walker was a teenager. And she was on a cheerleading team in her high school, uh, located in Knoxville, Tennessee. She was popular. Everyone loved her. Her boyfriend was on the football team. So you know how that goes. Cheerleader, boyfriend. So she had a very nice high school life. But you just never know what's going on at home or in a person's mind, you know? And so November 18th, 2016, Emma Walker was at a party with her friends and they were celebrating the football team they had just won. So they threw this big party and she gets a text message from a, an anonymous number that said, I have someone that you love, and if you don't comply, they will get hurt. So Emma didn't know if this was like a sick joke, but she was... She showed her friends. And so her and her friends went outside. And it was her boyfriend. He was laying in the grass. Like just dead weight. And he was laying there unconscious. And when they woke him up, he was holding his head. He was freaking out. He said he was kidnapped by the, a man in black, is what he said. And he didn't know how he got there. So everybody was just like weirded out about this, right? The next day, Emma was home alone. And someone was banging on her door. Trying to get in. And so she looked outside and it was a man in black. 
So Emma got scared and called her boyfriend. Who was just beat up by the man in black. But when you call your boyfriend for help, you know, your boyfriend wants to protect you. And so he got to Emma's house as fast as he could. But of course, by the time he got to Emma's house, the man in black was gone. So that Sunday, Emma went to work. Everything was fine. And then November 21st, which was Monday, it was time to get ready for school. Emma went and get off the bed. And when her mom went to shake her, her body was cold. What's going on there? I just tried to wake up my daughter for school. And she was cold. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't know what So everyone at school was saying, it was a rumor going around at school that she had committed suicide. And the detectives noticed two very small holes in her wall, the size of like a pinhole, but it was like, it could be the size of a bullet too. And then they also found Emma had a bullet lodged behind her ear. So now the detective detectives is like, it wasn't a homicide. It was a personal attack. This wasn't an accident. It wasn't natural causes. Because that's what they were going to say. Until they seen that bullet lodged in her ear. And... They're like, for them to hit perfectly behind her ear, they must have knew where her bed was at. So it was a personal attack, somebody who knows her. Ain't toast supposed to be crunchy? I'm confused. That's why I just need to stick to my diet. Because every time I spend money, it don't be worth it. It don't be worth it. So now the police is talking to everybody. Everybody that has anything to do with Emma. Well, when they talked to her boyfriend, Riley, and his parents, his parents was very concerned. Because come to find out, Riley tried to commit suicide uh, a couple months back when him and Emma was having relationship problems. So if he would try to hurt himself because he was scared he was going to lose her, what is he going to do to himself now that he really has lost her? So everyone was worried. And Riley's friends went to the police and was like, Riley has a gun. We're very worried about him. We're scared that he's going to hurt himself with this gun. At least take the gun away from him. He's not going to listen to us, but he's making all these Facebook posts dedicated to Emma. Like, you know, a teenage love, you think it's your one and only. You think it's never, ever, ever going to be nobody else for me. So imagine them passing away. That's hard to deal with. Especially if you were already suicidal before that. If you acted so uh, devastated that y'all were having relationship problems, what would you do to yourself, right? So when police go to collect this gun, Riley acts like he doesn't have it. And they're like... The police is like, your friends told us you have a gun. And because you're suicidal, it's very important that you give it to us. And we need to keep an eye on you, you know? And took away all the parents' medicine because that's how he tried to commit suicide before was uh, 
he mixed alcohol and a whole bottle of Vicodin. So police go around checking cameras. Like everybody is looking for the man in black. They're looking at traffic cameras, like any type of camera outside of a store. They're watching it, looking for a man in black. In the meantime, you're taking everybody in one by one, questioning them along with Riley, the boyfriend. But it wasn't until Riley kept backpedaling Every time they asked him, where was he at the night that Emma died? Um, and you said you spent the night? I'm pretty sure I did, yes. Actually, yes, I'm positive about it. I did spend the night. You can't remember if you spent the night at Noah's or stayed with your grandparents? Texting me. Which group? The one that passed away. Oh. Not only did he not remember where he was at, now all of a sudden, he's calling Emma the girl. That girl, he would not say her name, right? After you're putting all this stuff on Facebook, though, Emma's parents told the police they have been trying to keep Riley and Emma away from each other because they noticed a pattern with Riley and he had uh, tendencies of a psychopath. Whenever they argue, he would say things like, you're dead to me. I'll see you in the obituary. And then... And then 15 minutes later, he's following it with an apology. Emma's parents made several attempts to keep them away from each other. They grounded Emma. They took her phone from her. They was even driving her to work. But Riley gave Emma an iPod and said, this is how we're going to communicate. So... He tugged at Emma's heart because it's like, you going to go all out for me? You want to talk to me? You must really love me. Despite my parents, despite anybody keep keeping us away from each other, you ain't having that. And neither was the parents. Emma's parents did everything that they could to keep these two away from each other. So apparently, the day that Riley got kidnapped, that came out to be a sick prank that Riley did on Emma because Emma had just broke up with him two days ago. They were like on and off a lot. And it was such a big coincidence that two days after we break up, your body ends up at the same location as the party that I'm at. How convenient. And the kidnapper knew, the kidnapper knew to dump your body where I was at. And had my number to say, if you don't comply, they're going to get hurt. But there was nothing to comply to. Because when I went outside, you were just on the ground, holding your head, saying, how did I get here? Apparently that night, nobody believed him. And that's why everybody was weirded out. Because they were looking at him like, that's corny. Why would you do that? Why would you lie? Even Emma was like, what? And Emma told him, I never want to see you again. And she ran off. It wasn't until the next day, remember when somebody knocked on her door? It was the man in black. She did see a man in black. She texted Riley after she said, I never want to see you again. She texted Riley the next day and said, I hate you, but I need you. The man in black is at my door. He said, I'm flying to you. And so he was depositing all these little things to try to get her to care about him. And these, this, these are the same things that Emma's parents was trying to explain to Emma. This is what happens in a toxic relationship. This is very unhealthy. And because he has been caught with other females, he's mistreated you, and we have taught you not to put up with that. And you broke up with him the way that you were supposed to, but now he's trying different tactics to get you to care about him. The first time he got kidnapped, you didn't care. So he went back to the drawing board. Okay, what else can I do? Oh, I can scare her. Let me bang on the door. And then it worked because you text him and said, hey, I need you. I hate you for what you did yesterday, but now I need you because somebody's banging on my door and I'm home alone and I'm scared. So you, you boosted his ego to make him feel like a man. 
And that was a part of his plan the whole time to insert fear into you so that he can be the superhero and then y'all can be back together. The, the measures he was going to for this girl is sickening. So the day that he was her superhero and came over there to, um, to came over there when she was home alone, her parents had pulled up and was like, no, you're not allowed here. You have to go. You have to go. And then that's when the, her parents tried to explain to her, like, you don't think it's weird that the, this man in black is the reason why you're calling him? What if he is the man in black? And Emma thought about it and was like, I don't think he's the man in black, but I am going to end things with him for good. We're just not good for each other. He's off to college. I'm still in high school. Let's just move on. So she broke up with him again. And the parents took her phone. They was like, we want to make sure you stay safe. We want to make sure you learn boundaries. And you seem to be weak in the knees over him. So we're going to help you. And so they took her to work that day, waited till she got off of work, drove her back home. And then that night, her parents were asleep and her father said he heard a door slam. He didn't think nothing of it until he heard another door slam. That's when he jumped back. He jumped up, went to her room and saw that she was sleeping peacefully. So he went back to bed. He got up very early to go to work. And then that's when her mother went to wake her up because she was normally a morning person already up getting dressed and this time she was just laying in the bed so her mother just thought well she's she broke up with him again so maybe she's like feeling down about it doesn't want to get out of bed let me go wake her up and then that's when she realized her body was cold so it's all making sense the police can definitely take this information and put him in in jail but they would love to have proof and and it just so happened that riley's friends came to the police and was like, we feel like Riley did it. Um, and we want to help you catch him. And, th and so the police had told them, like, this could be very dangerous for you guys. If he just killed her, who are y'all, you know? And, and they were like, we don't care. We want to help. We want to help Emma and her family get justice. Thank God for these boys. And so they was like, okay. So the boys went to his house and the uh, police wired them. And they also gave them a keychain that had a camera in it. I'm sorry about you, my dog. I can I really, I want to be so upset and I can't because I'm more worried about getting arrested and putting away from murder that I didn't commit. Never in my life would I kill someone that I love that much. Love you, bro. It sucks me. I deal with all this pain. Riley clearly had no clue about the sting. He had faith in his friends. I'm trusting you guys. Like, with my life, because I mean, this is seven years in jail if I get convicted of something I didn't do. Why can't you just give me a gun? Just, it just needs to be gone. For whatever reason, just it just needs to be gone. You guys don't have to come with me if you don't want to. So Riley convinces them to go to the biggest river ever to drop the gun in there because he really believes that there's no way they're going to find this gun if he drops it in the river. And his two friends was like, all right, come on. Yep, let's do it. They get in a the car, they drive there, and as soon as Riley pulls the gun out, the friends text the police and said, now. The police swarms them out of nowhere. They get Riley, they take him to jail, they look into the bag that he was pulling the gun out of, and what do you know? A black outfit. Riley was the man in black. He was a sick individual that, that wanted control. Everybody said the same thing about him. All of Emma's friends, all of Emma's friends, Emma's parents, everyone said that Riley was very possess possessive and controlling. And even when she worked, he would sit outside in the parking lot and wait till she got off work. He was in a relationship when he met her and he broke up with that girl to be with Emma. He was just like obsessed from jump. And she's just thinking it's, you know, it's a normal relationship. She didn't know what she was getting herself into and love is blind. And so she figured he loves me, you know, he keeps trying and who can blame her because we've all been there. If someone just keeps trying and it's not working and it seems like they're putting in effort to change, 
It's like, why not give them a chance? And she was also young. She didn't know much about boundaries. And it was her first love. And it's just so sad that she lost her life. So moving forward, they, um, they went to court. And Riley's lawyer said, basically, they, they, Riley's lawyer never said he didn't kill her. All he said was he was trying to put fear into her. He did not mean to hit her with the gun. He meant to just shoot into her bedroom to scare her again. So then she would call him and he would be the superhero. He loved this girl so much. He wanted to be her superhero. So he was doing things, childlike things, to get her to care about him. He figured that if he could be her Superman, that she would fall back in love with him. And I think that we all can learn something from Riley is that you cannot manipulate fate. You know, if somebody doesn't want you, then move on. You cannot control how they feel. You cannot do things to be the superhero. You are manipulating fate and it backfired on you. Because now this little girl who had her whole life ahead of her has tragically lost her life. And now you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. I think he got like 50 years, 50 years in prison. Um, and he has to do those 50 years before he can even do parole. So if he makes it to 75, that's when he'll be, that's when he'll be getting out of jail. That's a long time to sit. You know, it just, it's stuff like that just don't be worth it when you're young and dumb. And I, and, and I feel like we all need to teach our children how to respect other people's decision. My, my kids are five and six and I teach them that all the time. You know, if DJ don't want to share with Angel, you got to respect his decision. I'm not going to make him because I don't want you to become an adult and think that you have to make somebody do something for you. No, you don't. Because that's how you end up in jail, trying to control somebody, trying to manipulate fate. And so let's keep Emma Walker's name alive. She definitely did not deserve what was handed to her. And I hope that Riley has learned such a big lesson. Post notification goes to... Thank you so much for having your post notifications on. Shout out to you for being the first to comment on the last video. If you would like a shout out, all you have to do is be the first to comment on the next video. If you would like to see more Fatal Attraction, then click right here. If you would like to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another video, then click right here.